the class is geared towards making assets, vehicles, parts for games. Uh, as games get more and more complicated, especially with the next-gen stuff that we're seeing with the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and Nintendo Wii, uh, the polygon counts are going up. But there's still a limit as to what the polygon counts can handle for a normal game. And it depends on the game. If there's a lot of assets on the screen at one time, you're not going to get as many polygons for, say, something like a vehicle as you would if there was only one vehicle on the screen at a time. So it makes it kind of complicated to discuss what is a game asset and what isn't. Um, and just to complicate everything, we're also learning the 3D software as we're making these parts and pieces. I have two tanks here on the screen. Um, this particular one, which you're going to see a lot in the class, is actually a very high poly tank. There's a lot of polygons in this tank. There's things like this lattice work down here, these hose objects, um, even the treads here have a lot of polygons in them. If I go to edged face mode and um, change the coloring on this particular tread here, let me click on it, and let me change the tread to something color that's something that you can see. And you can see if we zoom in here, there's a lot of polygons in each one of these little tread pieces. Probably far too many polygons for an object that would go into a normal um, game engine. Where if we look at this particular object over here, let's see what I'm on here, okay. Um, and we look at the tread object itself, and I zoom in here, you'll see that the tread object itself is really just a couple of really long polygons, and the texture is what is adding the tread uh, look to this particular object. So two different ways of doing it. Now, this object here is from a game. It was actually made for um, a war game for the last generation of consoles. This particular object was not made for a game. It was made for a cutscene, and um, it was made for the cinematic part of a game. So we've got two different objects here, two different purposes, and both were made for the game industry. Um, what we're going to be doing in this class is something more similar, most likely, to this. Now, it's up to you. I'll show you <clears throat> how to make objects like this, but they are very low poly. They're all mostly um, single objects that are very low poly in nature, where something like this is much higher poly in nature. Um, both will be covered in the class. What you choose to do with your particular object is really up to you. And this discussion will come up again as we talk more about the polygon structures. We're probably going to start off with something like this, because we do have to learn the program along the way. And the program's just a little bit easier if we're not paying as close attention to polygon counts all the way through this class. Now, if eventually what you're interested in is something like this, the second class will deal specifically with game-ready assets. So this particular class, we're going to cover um, how to use the software Max to make objects, and then you can um, diminish the polygon counts if you want along the way. We're certainly going to cover everything that you would need to do that, but it's not necessary to pass this particular class. The second class will then loop back around and cover everything that's specifically needed to get these objects into a um, into a, a game environment. And we'll be doing props and um, different types of game assets in that second class. So think of this class as the beginning class where we'll cover everything that one would need, and the goal is just to get something that you're happy with at the end of the class that's some sort of vehicle, 
and the second class will then spin back around and cover everything that's specific to getting it into a game, the, the low-poly type modeling. Um, here's another couple examples just to show you um, what, oops, let's go this way, what it is that is a difference. I'm going to open this scene up. And here we go. This is a real high poly scene that I've got here. I'm going to hop out here to um, this particular render of this scene, and you'll see the difference between a high poly and a low poly scene. Open that back up. This is my thumbnail program that's opening, particularly slow. But you can see here, there's a lot of high poly objects in this particular scene. The um, if I turn this over to wire or edged faces, let's go with edged faces on this. You can see there's a lot of polygons in this scene. And here's the um, example of the render of this scene. And this would be something that we would probably see in the cinematics of a game, not in the particular gameplay. Now if I go back over to um, my desktop here, there we go, and this particular um, example, which I'll open this scene up now, is a low poly scene. And this was made for a baseball game for PlayStation 2. And you can see, at first, there isn't really much of a difference. <coughs> But the polygon structure in these scenes is very different. And if I highlight this, you can see that it's really a very low poly type environment that we're dealing with where the last one was a much higher poly. So when we're dealing with these polygon counts, it gets a little difficult to tell exactly what would go in a game. There are certain rules, but different game engines will handle different things differently. So we'll kind of go on a generic idea of what will go into a game. We'll deal with medium range polygon counts, especially in the second class. And for this class, we're going to go on the assumption that as long as you're learning the program and you're having fun with making the vehicle, we're going to go with it. And then we'll discuss along the way what would and wouldn't work in a game environment. Okay?